All right, cool. So last content lesson for level three chemistry. And in fact, last content lesson for my seniors as well. I finished teaching all my senior classes, all their content. So now it is in your boat, or sorry, it's now your responsibility. You gotta learn everything and be ready for your exams. All right, so what we are talking about today is Gibbs free energy and how we uh, integrate that in into our enthalpy calculations. Sorry, enthalpy calculations. I saw that was a typo. Um, cool. So the do now question is a really good way to get us thinking about Gibbs free energy. So we talk about endothermic and exothermic. Exothermic are chemical reactions that release heat energy. Endothermic are reactions that absorb heat energy. And my question for you is, do you think so it's not a yes or no in that sort of sense, like right or wrong. I'm asking, what do you think? If you have an endothermic reaction, can it also be spontaneous? So can it occur without any external influences? Like, does it happen automatically? So do you think it's possible to be endothermic and spontaneous? Yes, anything is possible. The correct answer is yes. And we'll look at the information to why that is the case. So... Um, before we do that, I want you guys to have a chance to do some pre-learning, uh, so that way it makes the notes a little bit more digestible for you. So there's some SciPad pages I want you guys to work on, uh, looking at entropy, looking at uh, the change in entropy, uh, looking at how enthalpy and entropy uh, interact with each other, and then how can we use that to predict spontaneity of reactions. So don't need to complete all the pages, don't need to complete all the questions. In fact, I'm happy if you just want to read it um, to get you guys a head start. Um, do you want me to give you maybe 15 minutes and then I'll do the notes? Does that sound like a good plan? Give you a chance to look over those? Okay. Awesome. Oh, let me open myself back. Okay, cool. So today's lesson, we are talking about two main things. We are talking about Gibbs free energy, and we're also talking about uh, entropy, because entropy falls under the category of Gibbs. But the reason why we talk about Gibbs free energy is because we're thinking about spontaneity of reactions. Um, so when we talk about spontaneity, we're talking about does it happen automatically, or do I need to put something into the system to get that reaction to occur? Um, you can also think about like the word spontaneous. Like if you're a spontaneous person, you're always kind of like, ready to go, like you're go with the flow, that sort of thing. So the same thing we're talking about chemical reactions, which ones happen spontaneous, which ones happen spontaneously, and which ones do not happen spontaneously. Are we okay with that as an idea? So it's referring to when we talk about spontaneity. When we're trying to decide if a reaction is going to be spontaneous or not, we use something called Gibbs free energy, and it is a calculation. Um, now, you guys are not going to be expected to do any sort of calculations for this assessment. I'm just trying to get this camera to focus. Um, there we go. You won't have to do any calculations for this section of the assessment, but I will be talking about math in a general sense um, as a means to kind of help you guys understand conceptually what's going on. So while we talk about Gibbs free energy, it's already decided to go off. It is just a really kind of easy calculation and I'll break it down with what it means. Um, so Gibbs free energy is equal to the delta H minus uh, T times delta S. And let me talk about what each separate component of those things mean. Um, something to keep in mind is if we calculate Gibbs free energy and we get a negative number, so if this number is negative, that means it's spontaneous. So like I was saying with spontaneous, it just happens automatically. You don't need to do any extra special things. The reaction will just go. If this number is positive, then it is non-spontaneous. So we're gonna need some energy in the system to get this going. Are we okay with that so far as concepts? Okay. The next thing that we have, so when we're trying to calculate Gibbs free energy, we're looking at two factors. The first factor is enthalpy. So that is deciding if it's endothermic or exothermic, which is what our delta H is. So that one you've already seen before. That is our enthalpy. 
Now, the new thing that we haven't talked about is what this delta S is. This delta S is referring to entropy. So it sounds very similar as a word, but very, very different. Entropy. When we are talking about entropy, we are talking about the amount of disorder. So when entropy is positive, we're talking about an increase in disorder. If entropy is negative, we're talking about a decrease in disorder. So more organized. So positive equals um, more disorder. Negative equals uh, more ordered. Now, thinking about it, do you think we naturally want to become more disordered or less disordered? You want to be more disordered. So naturally what happens in the universe is we are going to an area with higher entropy. So think about it for a second. Like if I spray this hand sanitizer, no, this dust sanitizer, it does have a smell to it. And when I spray it into the classroom, those air molecules aren't going to come closer together. The ethanol isn't going to come closer together and become more concentrated because that's more order. Instead, it's going to float around the whole classroom and get spread out further and further apart. Are we okay with that so far? So the natural state of matter is to get more disordered. So like, think about it. When you add a couple of drops of food coloring into water, it spreads out naturally because when those food coloring spreads out, that is creating more disorder as well. It's very hard to get that all to concentrate back into a single point again. You are also welcome to use that excuse to explain why your room keeps getting messy because the natural state of order is that your room is going to get messy. So we're always going to get more. So the natural order of things is we want to get more and more disordered. That's the same reason why, again, our universe is expanding because that's going to create more disorder. Other things to think about when we think about disorder is states. So which state do you think is the most disordered? Solid, liquid, or gas? It's because it's moving around faster. So things like gas is going to be more disordered. So increase of disorder would be going uh, from solid to liquid to gas. Other ways that you get more disordered is increase in temperature, because as we increase temperature, our molecules are moving faster. I should say molecules, should say particles are moving faster. It's more general. And the other thing that helps increase our disorder, I'm just looking at all my things, uh, number of particles. So if I'm going to create more particles from that chemical reaction, that's increasing my disorder. So for example, if I'm looking at 2O2 versus 3O2 as my two choices, there's a typo there. So you see how we have ozone becoming oxygen? We have three mole sorry, two molecules of ozone versus three molecules of oxygen. This is more disordered. So this is increasing entropy. And the last way is complexity of the system. So larger molecules have more uh, disorder than small, simple molecules. Are we okay with that so far? I'm gonna move it back once you guys are good. Keep going. Another good example of increasing disorder is dissolving. So when I dissolve an ionic solid into water. It's now freeing those ions to move around. So dissolving is another good example. All right, keep going. 
Okay. So when we're looking at this equation, like I said, if it's negative, then it's going to be a spontaneous reaction. We have enthalpy minus entropy, but there's one important factor we haven't talked about, which is this guy here, which is temperature. So depending on temperature, that can also influence whether or not a reaction is going to be spontaneous. So if we have a set chemical reaction, maybe at one, uh, at a certain degree Celsius, it is not spontaneous. But if we increase the temperature, then it does become spontaneous. So that's something, again, we also have to think about. Sorry that it keeps going out of focus. All right, keep going. Yes. Okay, so again, let's think about that equation and let's think about it in different situations. So let's say, for example, so I have Gibbs equals delta H minus T delta S. So let's say in our first example that we are thinking about, we're thinking about an exothermic reaction. Just trying to find a new color that I haven't used. And let's say it's an exothermic reaction that increases disorder. So if I was thinking what was happening in this equation, exothermic is going to result in a negative delta H. So we're going to have a negative number. And we're going to be subtracting a positive number because entropy is going to be positive if it's increasing. So if my value for entropy is positive, then there's more disorder. And then regardless of what temperature, it'll still be a negative number overall. So my net result is going to be a negative number uh, for Gibbs. Therefore, always spontaneous. Are we okay with that as a concept? So if I have an exothermic reaction and it increases my disorder, whenever I do the math, regardless of what numbers I put in, it's always going to be a negative number. It's always going to be a negative number that I always have a spontaneous reaction. Are we okay with that? Let's grab me some more paper. All right, shall I do the next example? All right, let's say in this next example, I'm just trying to grab a different color that I haven't used. Let's say I have an endothermic reaction, and in this endothermic reaction, it decreases the disorder. So not only is it cold and absorbs energy, but on top of that, my molecules become, or sorry, not my molecules, my particles become more organized. So when we're doing that calculation, my delta H is gonna be a positive number. Now, since my uh, disorder is decreasing, that's now a negative number. So I have T times a negative S, so I'm subtracting a negative number. So when I subtract a negative number, what happens? It's basically positive. So if I'm doing a positive plus a positive, my net result is going to be positive. So Gibbs is gonna always be a positive number. So what that tells me is that this is always going to be a non-spontaneous reaction. Are we okay with that? So the last two we have to think about is endothermic that increases disorder and exothermic that decreases disorder. And how is that going to then play out? So that's going to obviously be influenced by temperature. Um. So there's two situations. Because when we're thinking about our Gibbs free energy, we have a positive number to start with, but then we are subtracting another number, and that number is uh, going to be negative. 
Does that make sense? So we have a positive number subtracting a negative number. Now, depending on what value that negative number is, the net result could be positive or negative. So if my delta H is greater than the T delta S, will I get a positive or negative number? So if this number is basically bigger than this one, say this one's 100 and this one is like 10. Yes. What do you think? Always result in a positive number. So this one in this situation will be an, um, non spontaneous. The other way to think about this is if this is at a low temperature, then you're going to have a small subtraction. What happens if I flip this around? Delta H is smaller than T delta S, and that, for example, is at a high temp. Mm -hmm. So it's going to result in a negative number, and so this one here would be spontaneous. And this was actually the question that you guys saw yesterday for that exam question. Uh, they asked you, I'll pull it up actually in a second so you guys can see it. One more color. All right, I'm just going to move it. Oh, it's not what I want. Go here. Go here. Let me go here. Uh, oh, wait, it would have been yesterday's question. Sorry, I want the notes from yesterday. Where did they go? Here they went. So do you guys remember this question up here that said potassium nitrate readily dissolves in water? So if it readily dissolves in water, it is spontaneous. You don't have to put any heat energy to make it start. Uh, below is the reaction. You see there's delta H and it's an endothermic reaction. So they want you to justify in terms of entropy, changes in the system and the surroundings, why the reaction spontaneous. Okay? So this one is an example of this one here where even though it's an endothermic reaction, uh, the disorder is going to uh, increase because when you dissolve something, you're now your ions, instead of being locked in a nice 3D lattice and being uh, more organized, is now going to break apart and free-floating in the water, and that's going to be more disorder. So this is an example of a spontaneous reaction. When we're talking about entropy, in this case, we are seeing that um, when it comes to the system itself, the entropy is increasing because now we have the dissolving, we have those ions moving around. It also asks about the surroundings. Now, the surroundings are basically the container around it. Now, the container around it, so the air around it, is going to be losing its heat energy because the, um, the reaction is absorbing that heat energy, right? So that means that the air around it is going to start slowing down because that energy that's having its kinetic energy is being transferred to the beaker to help with the um, dissolving, the endothermicness. So that means the system around it is actually decreasing entropy because the molecules, the gas molecules are moving slower. Does that make sense? So that's what that question's asking. This is a very common question that I like to ask over and over and over again. Uh, I'll pull up the marking subject so you guys can see how the points broke down for that guy. There we go. Just trying to see. What question was that one? One question one. Oh, it's right here. Oh, wow, they even actually gave it all the way up to the excellence, which is surprising. So ions in solution, more disorder, so the entropy is increasing. Since the reaction is endothermic, heat is absorbed. As a result, the decrease uh, in the dispersal of matter 
um, disorder from the surroundings, so entropy of the surroundings decreases. Um, and then given that potassium nitrate regularly re readily dissolves in water, the reaction is spontaneous, so there's an increase in entropy in the system must be greater than the decrease in the entropy of the surroundings. Therefore, the total entropy of the system must be positive. Are you okay with that? So, achieved is just recognizing the entropy of the system increases, or also the recognizing the entropy of the system decreases. Sorry, of the surroundings decreases, explaining it, it's the merit with a minor error, potentially, and then the excellence is the full justification. And you can always link in Gibbs free energy about why it would be spontaneous as well. Are we good? All right, last one to think about then is if we have an exothermic reaction that increases disorder. So it decreases disorder. So endothermic, sorry, exothermic. Uh, that decreases disorder, so it becomes more organized. So in this case, we're doing a negative number minus uh, a negative number, so we are still adding it together. Do you agree with me on that? All right, so if my delta H value uh, in this case is... I can't think how they're describing this. I think they got this the right way around because I know it's a negative number. Uh, ba, 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 ba. It's fine. All right. So if my delta H number is greater than T delta S. So in this case, the, let's think about it instead of positive and negative, just the net number. So if this number, uh, it's hard to explain now. Now I'm losing my thought. Should I check what I was thinking up, up here? This is positive, not greater than that. Yeah. Number's positive, less than that. Just trying to think about, because now I'm dealing with negatives. Do the first one. Right. If this, oof, I don't like how this is, okay, let's not think about positive and negative because I think that makes it worse. Let's think about just the sum. All right, so if this negative number is larger than whatever we're adding to it, that would make it a negative plus, yeah, a negative minus a negative. So this number combined is more negative than, or that it's larger than that guy, then whatever I'm adding doesn't make sense. And so that's going to be spontaneous. Not sure if I'm explaining that right. Does that make sense? No. Okay. <laughs> Start over. All right. I'm not thinking about this as positive and negative in a sense of like exothermic and endothermic. I'm just thinking about it as the type of number. So if this number is larger than that number, when I do this uh, addition here, that negative sign means that we're going to have overall net more negative than the positive that we're adding to it. So say, for example, if I have 100 for my delta H, and I have, in this case, 10. So 10 is, 100 is larger than 10. So I have this negative number, that's a negative 100, and then I'm adding positive 10 because it's negative, uh, plus and, sorry, it's minus a negative, so the net result is negative 90. That's how I'm thinking about that. That's why I was trying to get my math around to figure out what's the best way to explain what I mean by that. Are we okay with that? All right. If it's the other way, so my delta H is less than T delta S, then that's going to be non-spontaneous. Ah, running out of space. Non-spontaneous. So say, for example, let's say I flip those numbers around. I have negative 10 uh, minus a negative 100. So that's actually adding it. 
And in this case, I would have 90. So positive would result in um, non-spontaneous. When in doubt, just plug in some imaginary numbers. That's what I always do. So there is no calculation for this, but um, you can plug in imaginary numbers if that helps you out. So keep in mind, again, we're talking about the temperature. So in this case, we're talking about a low temperature. In this case, we're talking about a high temperature because the temperature could be the deciding factor of what's happening with that reaction. Are we okay with that? Cool. That is everything that I have for you guys. Um, so let me go back to here so you can see all the working. That's not what I want. This is what I want. Okay. So here's the work for Gibbs, and I'll put it back onto the classroom screen. Um, you can go back and do those SciPed pages from task number two. Uh, this one I do actually find useful compared to the calculation. So most of the calculation questions, I say go ahead and just jump straight into the sci or jump straight into the exam questions because uh, there's not a whole lot of help with the scaffolding of those questions. You might as well just jump straight in. Uh, but in this case, this is actually useful if you're not quite getting entropy and Gibbs free energy and spontaneity to use those uh, pages to help you. Um, otherwise, you can go on to No Brain Too Small. They have collated these uh, entropy questions. And like I said, they're just these small little guys like that. Cool. All right, you got 15 minutes, so pick something you would like to work on.